Module 2, Organisation of Living Things. And we're going to focus on inquiry question 1. How are cells arranged in a multicellular organism? And in order to dig deeper into this, we need to have a think about the differences between unicellular and multicellular organisms. And there's also a third group of cell um, collaborations, which is called colonial organisms. So this is where cells act as a colony together, and it's a sort of halfway house between the unicellular and the multicellular organisms. So let's uh, focus in on those three different types of organism. And the prefixes are quite helpful in reminding us what they're about. So unicellular, uh, uni meaning one, and you'll be familiar with words like um, unicorn and unicycle. And multicellular means many, so many cells working together, unicellular, one cell, and colonial, we'll come to that in a moment, it's kind of an, a halfway house between those two. So unicellular organisms include these sorts of examples, paramecium, amoeba, bacteria and yeast. So bacteria out of these four is prokaryotic, doesn't have a true nucleus. And the other three are examples from the eukaryotic group with a true nucleus. And um, unicellular organisms can get all their um, functions done with just one cell. So you're relying on one cell only. But that does make them a little bit vulnerable because if one cell goes, then that's it. The organism has gone. Um, but it does mean that they can quickly respond to changes in the environment. They can grow quickly by just dividing in half. And they are very, they are very responsive to changes in the environment around them, um, which are some of the advantages of being unicellular. And when we look at multicellular organisms, here we have many cells, as we've said before. Um, they work together in a community and they're actually specialized. So you can see on this image in the center, we've got um, an egg that is being fertilized by a sperm and that will divide and divide and divide, producing cells that are truly identical to each other in terms of their genetics. So they've got the same DNA, but because different genes are switched on in the different cells, you end up with different uh, cell types, which are called specialized cells. And these have differentiated from that original embryonic zygote that was formed when the fertilization event happened. So you end up with things like nerve cells, uh, different types of blood cells, so red blood cells or white blood cells, different types of muscle cell, and you can see all these different, so you've got smooth muscle, striated mus muscle, and all these different tissues, these cells can join together to form tissues with different functions. And that's how multicellular organisms work. They gather together different tissues into organs. All of these have specialized functions and it enables the whole thing to be much more energy efficient because the muscle cells just concentrate on doing contraction and Nerve cells just focus in on doing conducting of messages. And the whole organism has, in general, a longer lifespan than a unicellular organism. It has more um, genetic diversity because they can now specialize and do sexual reproduction. And um, this genetic diversity allows them to adapt to changing environments. Um, and in general, these organisms are less vulnerable to short-term environmental changes, uh, but they can take longer to evolve and adapt if there's a long-term change or a permanent change in the environment. Um, so these more complex organisms can perform more complex functions, which means that they can avoid predators and any negative stimuli. They also can increase in size um, and be much more mobile. Um, so there are lots of advantages to being uh, multicellular, but these individual cells can't cope on their own. The whole thing has to work as a team for the organism to be functional. So now let's, let's have a look at this in-between stage that I was mentioning earlier. So colonial organisms are a special form of organism 
um, which can live independently, although the cells work together. And there are actually two types of colonial organism. There are cells which can come together. Um, sometimes they live independently, sometimes they live as a colony, and that helps them in that sort of complex social structure to increase their chance of survival. And an example of this would be something like a sponge living in the sea, a marine sponge, because those cells can be separated and live independently, and they can come together and live cooper cooperatively. Um, so they act both as unicellular and colonial organisms. But you have other types of colonies where the individual cells have become slightly specialized. So for example, the blue bottle, the jellyfish that can uh, wash upon our shores, that is a colonial organism. It's actually made of um, zooids, they're called, and they um, have there's three different subtypes in the blue bottle jellyfish, and they can only live and function as a colony. But the individual cells aren't particularly different from each other, not massively different from each other, um, not in a multicellular way. So they're kind of a halfway house in terms of evolution between being unicellular organism and multicellular organism. So two different types of colonial organisms. And the example we've got here um, is Volvox. This is a colony of algal cells, which forms a hollow sphere and spheres can change in size um, and each of the cells has a little um, flagella which is like a swimming tail and they connect the cells connect to each other by cytoplasm and can swim around in a coordinated manner which gives them a lot more um, scope to move and to survive than if they were individual cells on their own and that's what volvox looks like um, there and that ability to swim um, allows them to make their way towards the best sunlight, the most optimum sunlight for photosynthesis. So with that knowledge of unicellular, multicellular and colonial organisms, you should be able to make some summaries of the differences and the advantages of these different types of organisms.